the Yukon River, the great river of northwest Canada and Alaska. It flows a distance of 3,190 kilometers before reaching the Bering Sea. It was on this river and its tributaries that stern wheel steamers became the main mode of transport. From 1869 and well into the 20th century, these stern wheelers travelled from Whitehorse to Dawson and back during the summer ice-free months. But today the river is mostly used by canoe adventurers and a few speedboats and at Dawson the vehicular ferry. During the summer months at Dawson City, tourists have the opportunity of riding on a replica paddle steamer. But it's not a stern wheeler. In total, there are around 250 stern wheelers that sailed on the Yukon and its tributaries during the heyday of the vessels. But all activity ceased when the rivers froze up every winter. By the middle of the 20th century, improved roading and faster transport made the slow progress of the stern wheelers redundant. Many were laid up along the river, such as these at Whitehorse. The last commercial stern wheel sailing took place in 1956. But that wasn't the last stern wheeler to make the trip from Whitehorse to Dawson City. On the 25th of August, 1960, the SS Kino came out of seven years retirement to make the last self-powered stern wheel trip from Whitehorse to Dawson City. And the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation television team went along to record this historic event. The Kino was constructed in 1922 in Whitehorse and was retired from commercial work in 1951. For most of that time it carried cargo of silver, lead and zinc concentrate down the Stewart River from the mines to the Yukon. It was a 290 kilometre route along a narrow, winding, shallow river. To cope with the shallowness of the river, the Kino's draft even fully laden never exceeded 0.9 of a metre. The steam-powered stern wheelers provided a new industry along the Yukon River. And that was providing the timber needed for fuel. So during a voyage, a stern wheeler would pull in for refueling, as the Kino had to on this voyage. On this three-day trip, the Kino consumed more than 400 cubic metres of firewood. On this voyage, the pilot house that is normally on the front of the Kino's top deck had to be removed in order to provide sufficient clearance to pass under a recently built bridge.
a situation such as this, the Kino would put its stern wheel panel into reverse and thus have better navigation ability in the fast flowing current. Dawson City, located where the Klondike River joins the Yukon. Dawson City, built to service the needs of the thousands of prospectors chasing the gold during the great Klondike Gold Rush of the late 1890s. Then and now, not a lot seems to have changed in Dawson City over the last century. But one change has been the arrival of the SS Kino, which is now placed on dry land as a museum, and it is classed as a National Historic Site. So now, present and future generations can explore the story of the Yukon Sternwheelers. At almost 40 metres long and 9 metres wide, the Kino had three decks. Here we look along the lower deck, which was used for freight, but is now a small museum. Above it was the middle saloon deck, which had passenger accommodation and facilities. Then there was a smaller upper deck, which had a cabin for the captain, and cabins for senior crew, and cabins for first class passengers. The Kino was licensed to carry 78 passengers but they didn't all have sleeping accommodation. And on top of it all was the pilot house or bridge. The engine room was just part of the main freight deck. It had a long locomotive style boiler which fed two high pressure single cylinder double acting steam engines which drove the piston rams which reached out to the axle of the stern paddle. The Yukon River has always been a critical lifeline in the lives of Yukoners. The SS Kino represents the fleet of sternwheelers that transported people and supplies in and out of remote areas of the Yukon. For many, this steamer during its 30 years of service was the first and last contact with the outside world each summer season, and the residents lived according to its schedule. The SS Kino is part of the history of the Yukon. <laughs>